Thank you. So, um, again, this is the most important slide of the whole slide deck because via that link, you have access to the whole slide deck. Um, I'm trying to speak a little bit slower. Um, part of it is because my voice is not very good after the serious drinking yesterday. Um, but also, if you think that I speak too fast, please you know, let me know. I am happy to... I understand not everybody's first language is English, including me. So uh, let me know if I can help you um, to understand. So, um, yeah, also I have social media. Feel free to um, take picture and post online. I'm going to tell you about how to reformat your code, not with AI. So it's going to be interesting. So first of all, I'm Cherk. Um, I contribute to open source, so um, I love going to Sprint, so please come to the Sprint tomorrow. If you haven't registered, you should uh, do it now. I organize a lot of events for the Python community. Um, right now, I'm the Python Software Foundation Director and Fellow, so hopefully, after this morning's keynote, you know a little bit about the Python Software Foundation. I'm also working as the community manager of, of the Open SSF. Uh, I can tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, open SSF is part of Linux Foundation. We focus on open source security. We are not a for-profit company, so we are not trying to get your money. Um, we have newsletter and blogs, so if you care about how to develop safe software, you should follow us. There are free courses you can study without paying, so there's for you. Uh, feel free to talk to me after if you want to know more. I'm also going to give another talk at the unconference later, so you can also come to that. But um, let's go back to this talk. How many of you will write code with another person? Yes. Uh, I hope that is a person, not the co-pilot, that maybe some of you will be using as well. So AI is a very popular thing nowadays. I try a little bit myself. Um, this is me using ChatGPT. Um, I ask ChatGPT, can they format my code? So ChatGPT said, Yes, I can. Give me your code. So I give them my code, which I copy from the internet. So there you go. Um, this is the result of the chat GPT reformatting my code. Can you see something wrong? Who sees something's wrong? It's too small, maybe. Don't worry, I have found it and pointed out for you. It's missing a close parenthesis. Um, but ChatGPT said, I have fixed it for you. No, it's making things worse. <laughs> so uh, this is just one case. I'm not saying that ChatGPT is always wrong, but it's not always right either. So. We don't need to um, use AI to reformat our code. There are good formatters available. Can you name some of them? Black? Black? Rough. Rough? Oh, it's the new one. So Black, um, Pi Better, or Auto Flake, iSalt. How many of you are actually using them? Oh, nice. How many of you know how it works? Okay. Do you want to make one yourself? <laughs> but I'm going to show you anyway. <laughs> so, chapter one, how to analyze a Python code. We want to represent the code in a structure so it's very easy to understand. So one of the way to do it is to use abstract syntax tree. 
So abstract syntax tree would be something like this. So this is a line of code. In an abstract syntax tree, it will preserve all the key elements in the code that explain how it works. You can see it has a function call, it has the name of the function, has the parameters of the function, um, but that's it. Comment, doesn't matter. White space, doesn't matter. Well, unless it's at the beginning. <laughs> so, doesn't matter. So, um, it's useful if you are writing a compiler or interpreter. A Py C Python is an interpreter, by the way. Um, so it's for ana analyzing uh, the, s the syntax. So it's, um, we call this type of analysis a static analysis. We l write some code to look at your code and to try to optimize it a lot of times. Um, for example, some compilers would um, optimize your code so that uh, when it got executed uh, every time, it can save some time. So a lot of times, uh, these compilers need to break down your code into a tree format and then maybe restructure it, keeping the functionality of your code, but make the execution faster. So an abstract syntax tree will keep the essence of how your code works but it doesn't care about the details like the comments and the trailing white spaces or some spaces in between that doesn't make your code wrong or can't be executed. So uh, abstract syntax tree doesn't care about that. But if I'm writing a formatter, right? For example, black uh, will try to follow pet age or what the community usually do to have some white spaces there to make your code more readable. So abstract syntax tree in this case is not very helpful. We need to use concrete syntax tree. So this is an example of a concrete, uh, concrete syntax tree. You can see it's still showing um, more of the details um, of how your line of code looks like. It will show you the, uh, for example, the parentheses. So if you have extra parentheses, it will show up in your concrete syntax tree. But can you still spot that is missing something? It is still missing the comment and some of the white spaces. Still no white spaces. I want the white spaces. So how do we do this? We need and other tool that can show me all the details. One of these tools that show me all the details is libcst. Uh, but not all formatters use libcst. Um, of course, Ruff is not using libcst because it's written in Rust. Um, even Black is not using libcst. But for me, it's a very good example because it's very easy to use and I do use it to have fun, which I will show you later. So this is uh, libcst explaining to the user what it does. So uh, it's not very updated, as you can see. Hopefully they will update soon to 3.12. Um, it's a CST, uh, concrete syntax tree, that keep all the details, including the right spaces, comments, and uh, parentheses. This is very useful if you are building some refactoring uh, application or a linter, because if you are writing a linter, you want to check everything. This is what a tree that is built with libcst will look like. You can see it's getting more complicated. It has the white space, of course. Even the comment has been saved in the tree, so you can see it uh, in one of the branches of the tree. So now we have our tool ready, so we can parse our source code. This is an example of using uh, libcst to 
pass a very simple expression. So you can see I have one plus two. It's a binary operation. But using libcst, you can see all the details has been preserved. On the left-hand side, there's an integer, it's one. Operator is an add operator. Uh, there are also a white space uh, before and after the operator. And then on the right is an integer, that is two. So we can pass our source code, it's a good start. What's next? Next, we want to find the part of the code that we are interested about. Imagine if we are now creating a reformatter. The trees generated by libcst is very big. Before you see the very simple expression become many, many lines. Imagine if you have, let's say, a few hundred lines of code. It will be very big. So not all of the code um, we do care about. We want to find the points where we want to work on. So we will use a matcher to do that. Uh, we will also use a visitor, which I will show you later. A matcher is, like the name suggests, it matches your code with some of the characteristics that you have um, defined. It's quite flexible. You don't have to say all the detail. It will immediately find that part that matches what you have um, defined. You can use some logic like zero or more, one off, or at least number, like for example, at least three of them. So that's more efficient than using an instance to check every single detail. This is an example, which I'm going to show you the real code. But let's have a look first. This one is checking whether the note is a binary operator, specifically an add operator. So let's look at the code. This is the code. Can you see? Yes, not so much, okay, bigger. So sorry about that. I, I'm using dark mode on my computer and not so good for you, I'm sorry. Um, so at the beginning, uh, I write this matcher is a function um, that it will use uh, the libcst matches to match the node whether it's a binary operator, uh, which is a add operator. And then I have an expression, which I have written down. This is just like the one plus two, so it's the same. And then I try to see if it matches that have a plus operator in between. So let's run this code. It's true, so it matches the one plus two, which is this expression. So, this is not that interesting. But if we use it later, you will see the power of it. The second thing I want to talk about is the visitor. So a visitor is um, a function that would transfer your code. It will go down the tree that you have generated, and then every time it enter a section of your code, you can do something about it, um, but you can't change it. You can only travel along your code and pick up some detail and save it somewhere. So, for example, I am counting how many add operator is in this expression. So I'm going to run this code and you will see um, how it works. So this is the code. So, um, so every time it visited a add, it will add the count by one. 
So I will also show the current count. And then it will say goodbye when it leaves the add section. So I have one plus two. And I will uh, first of all pass this um, expression into a module, which looks more like uh, this here. So this is the module. So after the parsing, it will look like that. And then I will use a visitor to visit it to see how many add we, section we have entered. So let's run that. You can see we have one plus two, so it only have one uh, add section. Let's change it up. Now, I have one plus two plus three, and I will have two add section, which is two add binary operator section. So this is how it works. So what does this lead to? Last thing, we can change the code. So now we know how to visit the code, pick up the details. Maybe with the help with matching, you can change the code. So um, visitor uh, read only. So now we need another one, which is transformer that can change the code. So transformer is not read only, you can read or write. It will also go through the whole tree, visit the node one at a time, like the add operator, it visit one at a time. You can also update the node. This is how it looks like. Um, so I have op by one, which is doing something very wicked. Um, it will enter the binary operation, check, so I will also show you this function later. It will check whether it's an add operation and then change it to add one more to it. So let's look at the real code. Uh, here, right. So first of all, I have a matcher. That match, if it's a binary operation, that involves two integer and a plus operation. So every time I finish a binary operation, I would check whether it has two integer and a plus operator. Everything that matches that means that is the first part of the addition because in the later part of the addition, it will not have two integer. It will have an operation and an integer. So now I can update the note. I, instead of having two integer, I change the left side into an operation with one and whatever that was there originally. So what do I mean? Let's say I have one plus two again. This time it will add an extra one on top of it. So let's have a look. Ooh, it changes. So this very wicked reformatter will change your code and add a one to it. It will work even if you have more than this. So let's say three, two, and four. So this time, can you guess what's the result? It's one plus three plus two plus four. So whatever you have, it will have a one plus. So it's always off by one. Now, let's uh, revisit this and see the last part of the puzzle. is to generate the source code. How do I generate the source code after I do this very wicked operation? It's very easy. Remember at the bottom of my code, it has um, new equals to module.visit. So new will store the new module that has been modified. And then you just call new.code and you will have the updated source code. Let's see it again. 
here we have this source code. Let's change it up again. So just to show you, I haven't pre-generated it. <laughs> um, so module, we, again, we pass this module into the very, very long module tree. And then I use this visit. But this time, I put in a transformer. So the code will be changed. And I store it as new. When you print out new.code, you will have the new code. So let's see what we have right now. Don't forget to save. Ooh, I have one plus zero plus two plus one. Anytime, anything you put in, it will, it will add a one plus, so you always get this wrong. This is what my transformer do. So, conclusion. I think um, a parser expressing a code in a tree structure is a very good way of expressing your code and analyze it. So we can actually understand how Python interprets our code and make it nicer by reformatting it. And using a reformatter actually will make your code easier to use by a lot of people and to collaborate. So we should learn more about it, or maybe, if you need to, you can write your own. So that's the end of my presentation. Before you go, I want to tell you about PyLadiesCon. Um, there will be a poster, the PyLadies poster upstairs. You can visit, talk to some PyLadies, and um, support PyLadies. Um, thank you very much. That's the end of my talk. Thanks so much for your talk, Chuck. Do we have any um, questions from the audience? Uh, yes. Microphone's coming. So hi, thanks for your talk. And this is very cool to review the wheel thing. So I, I, I mean, in, in the beginning, you mentioned that like, there are some other famous tools like Black Rough. And have you checked how they do the formatting things? And is that something similar to what you are working on? Or actually, there are more interesting things under the hood? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I haven't checked in detail. But um, this, what I show you, of course, is not the exact tool or exact method that is used by the other formatter. But by principle, it's doing the same. It will break down your code and analyze it, and then restructure it. Um, I know some reformator, for example, I saw um, they are actually looking at your code instead of um, formatting um, using the syntax tree. It's because uh, I saw it's a very small section. Uh, I only changed the import order of your code. So that one, they don't, they just look at the code as text. But if you have a formatter that work with a huge section of your code, or every line of your code, I think you will have to uh, express it in a syntax tree. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, hi, thanks for your call. Uh, uh, at the beginning, you mentioned there is AST and CST because uh, CST can like uh, keep the space or command stuff. And our thing uh, is now using AST for checking some uh, code. So I'm just curious, uh, would you suggest we try CST? Or have you ever have any like practical example on uh, where your team are using uh, this kind of tool for linting your source code? or something like that, yep. Yeah, so uh, again, AST and CST, the difference is the level of details of uh, the code that it represent. So there are different use cases. AST, you know, if you are, uh, doesn't care about how the code look, because a reformatter at the end, it would generate a new code. So you have, need to have more detail. 
that's why reformator, they will probably, most of them will use something, have more detail like CST. But uh, for example, compiler, because it will eventually become machine ex executable code. So it doesn't care about the detail or how it got presented to a human. Um, again, I can't tell you which one to choose. It depends on your use case. How much detail do you need? Um, I haven't write a compiler myself. I have uh, only uh, used libcst in some uh, formatter tools to do some formatting. Uh, that's my experience. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like mm. CST is like a superset of AST, but if that's the case, why would someone need to choose AST? Or it's faster or something like that? As you can see, um, the output of the parsing is very huge in libcst. So if you don't really care about the detail, it will be uh, an advantage to skip over those. So that's why you use the AST. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, any more questions? Okay, let's um, give Chuck one more round of applause for Thank a fantastic you. talk.